I'm up here on the breezeway between the garage and my house and what you see behind me is my internet antenna. It's the uh, local Wi-Fi area I switched to a couple of months ago uh, because the service from AT&T was just so terrible that we finally found a, a window through to one of their wireless towers. That was before the leaves became, came on the trees though. So my problem is now the signal's degraded since I've had all the leaves come on the trees. So I need to come up with a fix for that. First, I need to know what needs to be removed. And to do that, I made this, which is a mount with a laser on it, a very bright laser, as a matter of fact. In fact, this laser will set things on fire at close range. And I'm going to hook it to this antenna, shine it out in the trees, and it will tell me the direction and what limbs need to go, what trees need to go. And that should be a lot of fun. Get my internet back. Now this laser can only be on for a couple minutes at a time before it starts to overheat. So I have to shine it out there, pick my target, know where I'm going, turn it off, and go take care of the first tree, and then successfully as I cut things down, move on through till I get a clear shot at the tower. Let's turn on the laser. If we can push the freaking button. And I hope the camera can see this. Zoom in. There we are. That splash of blue right there. What I've got to do is figure out quickly what tree that is. So I load up my equipment in the ballast box and head out. Looks like I'm being video bombed by a wasp. Now that's a first. This tree right here was the first tree that the laser hit. And the next in line would be this small hardwood next to this pine, which its uh, branches go up into the space. But this pine here may be my ticket. It occurred to me that if I actually fell him in the direction of where the antenna wants to go, he's gonna sweep out an awful lot of the limbs that I need to come out anyway. So I'll probably first start with this little hardwood here just to get him out away from the base of the pine and then try to drop the pine off in that direction and just rake down whatever the hell it can rake down and maybe that will help me out. So once I get the tools unloaded from my ballast box, you can see I've got it loaded up, maxed out. So let's get that small tree out of the way. I'm not the first to do this or think of this, but it occurred to me if I had a little magnetic bubble level on my saw blade, I could make sure I got my notch cut and felling cut level. So we're going to see how that works out today. I'm not sure how well the camera can even see this thing. Let me get up close. You can hardly see the bubble. There's not a lot of contrast, but I'm not sure the camera can, but I can. So we'll see if that helps. Whenever cutting down any tree, it's a good idea to assess your risks. And one of the risks I see is there are a couple of dead limbs up there above where I'm going to be cutting. And I've got to be careful that vibration might shake those loose on top of me. So I'm going to keep a close eye on that. I've got, uh, there's a dead tree trunk right there. He's not going to create an issue. This guy is likely to mow a lot of these others down, take the limbs out with him, which is exactly what I'm counting on.
I made the mistake of driving the wedges in too far before I had finished the hinge cut, so the tree started to fall with too thick of a hinge cut. Now I have to proceed with extreme caution. Finally, I survived. Here's the tree cam view. Now that was a tall tree. Hopefully it took out enough limbs to make a difference. Not as big a gap as I was hoping. Notice that I moved Big Orange far away from this tree in case things went sideways. Literally. I decided not to buck up the pine now, but just to cut the limbs off. Onto that first tree that the laser hit. Notice that Big Orange has crept closer. He doesn't like being left out of the action. We interrupt this program to bring you this special subliminal message. We now return you to your regularly scheduled program. Exit stage right. Here's the tree cam view on this one. Next to hardwood near that big pine I put on the ground. Exit stage left. Another dicey situation to deal with. I was afraid if I tried to cut all the way through the hinge, the saw would get pinched. So I move up a bit on the trunk, where I felt I'd have more control. I was hoping the shock of the tree coming off the stump would bring it down. Nope. Once more with feeling. Folks, don't try this at home, at work, or at Sunday school. Dang. Maybe Big Orange can help. Once again, my chain boxes prove very handy.
There we go. On to the next tree. And the next. A harmless little hardwood, right? Not exactly. Jeez, that was a close call. Here it is in slow-mo. Look at the size of that limb that fell just a few yards behind me. This is why situational awareness is so important. I didn't see any dead limbs in the small hardwood, but it didn't occur to me that it would hit a dead limb in the big pine behind me. So folks, be careful out there. Time to cut up some of this stuff. After bucking up the pine, I hauled off the logs. Just need to nudge this one so I can scoop it up with the forks. A few more loads to clear the logs and that leaves the limbs for another day to get chipped up with my wood chipper. If you enjoy these videos, please help me keep them coming by clicking the like button, commenting below, and subscribing. Thanks for watching.